So I'm in downtown Westchester, Rose Valley Restorations. I'm going to take you in and introduce you to John Hutchinson, who does a lot of my furniture restoration work. Hi, John. This is John. Hi, John. Of, How are you? Good. This is John of Rose Valley Restorations, and I'm entrusting the Merklin table to him because it's really out of my uh, capabilities. So we've done some preliminary tests, which you'll see uh, in further along in the video, but John, maybe you can just walk us through your thought process on how you're going to go through stripping this and prepping it. And Well, we know that we figured out through experimentation with the stripper and the alcohol that this is primarily a latex-based paint with an overglaze, and they painted directly on top of the old varnish, which is probably on top of an original layer of shellac that was worn down. So unfortunately, the only way to get this paint off is to actually hand strip it. Um, and then we can get down to our base layer. Ideally, if there's some original shellac, we'll try to salvage that. If not, we'll take it down and then we'll rebuild an original finish to match what the table should have looked like when it was built in the 1880s. Is that correct? Roughly. So, 1880s, 1890s. And then we know this is brass, so we're going to clean all these down. Get that back to the nice polished brass. And we want to aim for somewhat of a mid-tone kind of more the honey oak that we see. There's the original color and finish there, but that was never oxidized. In fact, it's still, you can still feel the original finish on there, and that is shellac. And that doesn't have quite the grooves at the, the top, the exposed top above. And you can see what we were talking about. It does look like originally when it was manufactured, they filled the pores. Because they're not, they're not, um, they're definitely not as deep and as exposed as they are up here. Yeah. So that's why I think we should go back and fill the pores before putting the finish on. Sounds good. My biggest fear is what they talked about on the phone of why did they paint it? You know? Yeah, what's underneath that's being hidden. Yeah. Unless they just had outrageously bad taste, which does happen, right? <laughs> Looks pretty dark, darker than I expected. Yeah, but then you know what? They just painted over the dirt. That's old varnish. They just painted right over. They didn't even clean it, which is good. This is, see, it's not in the pores, it's in the scratches. There's the, there's what color we want. See, the biggest problem with oak is when they paint it, it goes. But I, I know that this had finish on it and it looks like they just went right over top of the old finish. Unfortunately, alcohol won't take this paint. So what is that you put on? This is just regular old fashioned uh, methylene chloride stripper that you buy at the hardware store. So was that the uh, wow. alcohol that took that off, the dirt, or is it... Yeah, so the strip, you can see the layers. So yeah, the paint is on top of the varnish. Now, you know, with the first and second layer of a uh, stripper, we got down to this varnish level, but there's still paint. And that's, you can see how open the pores are. That's yeah. the biggest problem with oak. But paint is embedded in the varnish so unfortunately we don't have too much to see. You can see where there's still varnish, there's still paint in the varnish. And the only way to then get that out Brass brush. is by, no, no, just by using that coarse steel wool and a little bit of alcohol and that, that'll actually pull stuff out of the pores too. But what we can do is recreate this old, I don't, I don't think you should go that dark anyway. No. Um, the color that you saw underneath. Yeah, I like that original color. This is what I really want. I mean, that's even a little light. I like this secondary oak. You know, it I've got it some. Looks like old oak. I got some reference pictures. I'll show you. There's almost no finish, and then they just put the paint right on top. So you feel it, that sticky stuff. That's a little bit of old varnish, but not much. There's the one that I have. The 
Watson, can you pass me a piece of like 400 or even 320? Oh, I'm sorry. Those are cool. Is that like really worn? It's worn and then just the, the color is so, I mean I almost, I mean when it was made I think they uh, did something to treat it. The lines would be different than the feet in terms of metal composite? Well I'm thinking the feet are going to be brass, we'll know in a second. And the guys above those, the griffins, the griffins, sometimes they're zinc. But then they would have been painted grass. But then they would have been painted, probably. Looks like yeah, it's grass. Grass, cool. Now how can we make it not look like we shine the heck out of it once we get the paint off? Um, I just take, I have, uh, I have some special chemicals that I would just, I can get it to the, the almost burnished bronze part. Okay. Uh, but in order to get the paint off, you have to shine it a little bit. Yeah, and sure. Then we can go back. I mean, I can show you if you want. And then knock it back down. Yeah, I'll just give you a demo. Then I can go back like this. See how it turns it right away? Yeah. And I can control how much, you know, we want to put on. I see. And then we can go back again and just give it a little buff, like on the high areas, you know what I mean? Right. You should be able to tell it's brass, but don't want it too, uh, too brassy. Let's hit a wing. Ooh. Want to come off. I see something coming through. Hold on. How do we test for zinc? Uh, isn't zinc non-metallic? I have to look that up. Not um, non-magnetic. And I know that zinc looks like aluminum when it's. It's um, that's not brass like that is. No. Cause it's got a silvery shine to it. I'm wondering if it could even just be cast uh, like spelter or white metal. Yeah, white metal, uh, pot metal. Yeah. It doesn't look like steel. It's uh, too pitted. <laughs> 